I just want to thank the way, thank the pastor, the leaders, the worship for having me back. It's a special moment to be here. Amen. I, a special moment to be in the house. Amen. I take nothing for granted. Every opportunity God gives me to come and touch your heart. Because the day I can't touch your heart through Jesus Christ, then I stay home. I don't, I don't believe in faking the funk. I don't believe in, in, in conjuring up things in the flesh. You with me? So let's have a seat and then look at your neighbor. Have a seat, look at your neighbor, and say one thing to your neighbor. Pharaoh has nothing on me. You get it? See, this is, this is, listen, listen, this is what I'm trying to get you. If it took Pharaoh 10 plagues to close up his house, God had to hit Pharaoh with 10 plagues before he bent his knee. We get hit with one, and we're selling a church. We get, we get hit with one, and, and we get hit with one plague, and we're doing church online. And then we're still late. You know, one, of the, one thing I want to share with you, Someone, there's people here today that if you don't get deliverance, you ain't going to make it. There's people here today that you left the door open. The devil has legal rights over your life and God brought you here today because he loves you too much to leave you in the condition that you're in. Because if, if, if you think you came to see a man, then you missed it. I mean, we got a full house. That means you're more determined than the devil. That means you're more determined than the devil. It does, listen, let me, let me share something with you. Let me, just, let me just walk you into a place of darkness. Let me walk you into the mind of the devil. See, you know, we, we have people that say, I'm a PK kid. I'm a PK kid. It means a pastor's kid. You grew up in church. See, I was the opposite side of the pastor's kid. I grew up in demonic church. So whatever you saw, pastor's kid, that he grew up in church and he went with, I, I, had, I had demonic baptism, demonic ceremonies. I, I, did, I did it all at the age of eight years old. So when you were living in church and going to discipleship, I was going to demonic school. So when you, when you were learning how great is our God and, all, and you were learning all, all, the, all the things of discipleship, which is a good thing to learn, you should be disciple. Because church is not discipling people anymore. Now we medicate you and we get you high to keep you. But not set you free. So, 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 so I was going to demon church at the eight, eight years old in demon church already. You know what's crazy about demon church? We don't learn, we don't learn how to take it easy on people. We learn spiritual demonic warfare. In order to kill, steal, and destroy, dismantle you, steal your purpose, steal your destiny, strip you down from your purpose and your identity, your authority in Christ Jesus. Because my favorite people to attack were believers. Because if you have the only power that I try to understood, the only power I knew, the only power I knew that the only power that I can test my powers, it was against the Christians. So when I, brought, when, I bought, when I bought my arsenal of demonic powers against you, you better be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, and anointed. Because if you weren't, I was going to break you. Because you were doing two-hour church when I was doing eight-hour church. See, I would go to demon church. I would go to demon church from the seven in the evening to five in the morning. You were doing two-hour Christianity. That don't work. That don't work. See, people, be, you sit here, people, you sit here, and people looking at their watches. What time that preacher going to finish? I got I to get home. Then you, t you know what that tells me? You're not, you're not in love with Jesus. You're using Jesus as a spare tire. 
in case you get a fly. I'm going to get down here because I'm going to get in your business. I'm going to get all in your business. I'm going to get all in your business. See, see, when I signed my contract with Jesus Christ, I signed a contract with Jesus Christ. I signed a contract that said even the 700 Club was flipping. They were, they were tripping. They said, that brother's crazy. I said, I, I'm doing life in Jesus. I want no parole. I'm on death row. I'm on death row. That means no matter how hard the devil hits me, I'm not going to quit. No matter what the devil does to me, I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about the church. There are a lot of devils in the church. Amen. Thank God that God called the church ICU. <laughs> All the sick people come. So, so when you were doing, this is the thing, the thing that I understand. When I came to church, this is the thing you need to understand. I came to, when I came to church, I was saying, but we do, I did that all in demon church. We spoke in demonic tongues, you spoke in tongues. You lay hands, we lay hands too. You, have, you, you did baptism, we did demonic baptism too. You did it in water, we did it in blood. You pray over people, we pray over you too. But the only difference between me and you, now I tell the demon, I tell all the devil, the only difference between you and I, I carry the presence of Jesus Christ. And when I carry the presence of Jesus Christ, there's no weapon formed against me will prosper. That means that what you throw at me, you can't do nothing to me. You can't curse me because I'm already blessed. So I, 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 so at the age of eight, I was ready to be trained by witches and warlock. My father was a warlock. My, my aunt was a witch. I, my, my generation and the bloodline came all the way down from Puerto Rico. Witchcraft. Brought into the United States. Hanging out with people from Cuba, Haiti, Miami, back to New York City. Animal sacrifices. Cut myself and drink my own blood. Because I did, you see, the demon people know one thing. There's power in the blood. At the age of 10, 12 years old, I was ready, I was ready, stand, I was taking human bones and sending them down. Human bones that had cancer so I can put cancer on you. For infirmity spirit, homosexual spirit, transfer spirit, lay hands on you, demonic hands. That's why you better be careful, you better be careful who lay hands on you. I tell you right now, I'm here, if you lay hands on me, I drop you. In, in, in demon church, I was being taught how to astral project, how to leave my body, how to leave my body and go to your house and curse you because the, the church at large, the church at large, they were missing one thing. You have no discernment. You have religion, but no discernment. You have a form of governance, but you have no power. That's why you gotta be careful. That's why you gotta be careful who you hang with. You gotta be careful who you associate with. You, you gotta be careful what, what church you go to. Because we ain't teaching anymore. We're teaching New Age. The New Age Church. It's true. Turn on your TV. It's all over TV. So how is it, how is it that, that when, when, when I, and I got, listen, when I got recruited, I was the only Satanist person in the planet that got recruited from the second heaven. I think people say, you want to be a saint? You want to paint your nails black and dress on in black? That's sissy stuff. That's a wannabe. It's not real saying this. When I got recruited, I was seven years old when the necklace fell from the second heaven. The Siete Potencia Africana fell from the second heaven. The seven dark, the seven dark powers of the African powers, the necklace fell from the second heaven and it dropped on my feet. I put it in my pocket. I walked home and put the necklace around my neck. I got recruited from the second heaven. When principalities and demonic demons run the earth round from that level, from first and second heaven. And then they got demons on the ground operating in the ground. Demons in the ground that operate in territory spirit. And the, the familiar spirit, the one you go, oh, I'm a, I'm a, yo me, yo me voy a las cartas. The psychics. Christians reading horoscopes. You know what's crazy about Christians? They chase question marks when they already had the answer. 
They chase question marks. I'm, I'm going to go over here and see what's going on. I'm going to go over here. You know, because everybody's mother's a prophet these days. <laughs> Give me your prophecy. I take it to Jesus. If he signed off on it, then I receive it. They're not going to sow no demonic stuff on me. Because you, you, you crazy self, you prophesy every five minutes. It's true. Because we, we get high on titles. We get high on titles. See, people, everybody, mother got a business card. Here's my business card. Here's my business card. I, was a lot, I, think, I, I don't know. I think the last time I gave a business card, I was 10 years ago. Imagine, imagine King David. He killed Goliath, right? He killed Goliath. They would have bought him a suit, and they would have given him a business card. <laughs> See, Goliath was in David's fight because he killed him too easy. Saul was his fight because he had to run for 13 years against that devil. And there's people, you sitting here, you've been, running, you've been running from that devil for years, and no one is able to shut the door. But I got news for you. Jesus is going to shut the door for you today. Oh, yeah, Jesus is going to shut the door for you today. You've been running for years from church to church. You've been running from place to place, and you're still being tormented. You still got generational curses. You still got open doors in your life that you can't. You got the devil. You think you got the devil by the throat, and he got you by the throat. So it's time to divorce the enemy. Either, how many people here celebrated Halloween? Yeah, if you got guts, raise your hand. At least we got one brave person. Raise their hand. He celebrated Halloween. You come over here, we're going to cast that out later. You can't do indecent proposal. You can't do indecent proposal. Say you love Jesus, but you're sleeping with the enemy. See, I do. You see, in, in witchcraft, in witchcraft, in witchcraft, I, I did the most demonic witchcraft in the whole planet, in the whole planet. I'm talking about, I'm talking about from astral projecting, turning myself into a wolf, and ended up in your house as a witch, uh, leaving my body and having contract with demon that I can manifest myself into animal to end up in your house. And, and I, I, have, I have abilities that when you came for a car reading, I sound just like your dead mother. Your mother's here. She wants to talk to you. You're in tears. You're talking to a demon. And all this stuff, and November 1st, I Santa Muerte, and everybody bring you the flowers, everybody bring the food. Listen, if you're not going to bring me flowers in my life, I don't need your flowers when I'm dead. <laughs> Give me the gift now. <laughs> bless me now. They bless me when I'm dead. I can't even see it. People always want to celebrate you when you're dead. I take care of my mama now. I bless my mom now. I'm, she's my superstar. I hook her up now. I'm not going to bless her when she die. You, you got to twist it. So, so, so the, the, the thing is, how could you fight a monster like me when you, had, when you was a Christian, but you, had, you, you look like a Christian on the outside, but you were spiritually anemic? You were spiritually anemic, so I was able to break you, dismantle you. I was able to fragment you. I was able to stay, steal your mind. I was able to steal your emotions and your will because I knew how to get into the spirit realm. When you couldn't stop something, you couldn't see. And that's why Christians, Christians, Christians today, and I'm talking to you because I want to help you with something. I'm trying to help you with something. I'm trying to get you to the finish line. So God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. But you, you see, that'll get you in the game. Now you have to work out your salvation. You have to work out. Your, you have to either, either, you, either you cut the rope today or whatever you don't kill, it's going to end up killing you spiritually. That's why I go, anywhere I go, I say, if you, if it, anywhere I go, I'm crazy. I say, any witches in the house, any warlocks, you want to bring it? Because I'm like Doc Holliday. I'm my tombstone. I'm your Huckleberry. I'm in California, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm still worrying for Madeline. I'm still worrying for Madeline Manson to take me to lunch. I invited him plenty of times for lunch, cause I'm not afraid of you. I seen too much in Jesus to doubt. The first thing that Christians get hit when they hit you, when the devil hits you, the first thing they hit you with is unbelief. 
Christian, you're sitting here, and you, this is the crazy part. You got faith for me, but you don't got faith for yourself. You bipolar. You got this crazy faith. You're speaking in tongues. You tell me how, how God's going to do great things for me, but when it comes to you, you don't show up. Come on, I know a few of those. John, you're going to get a break. What about you? Well, I don't know. I'm still praying. No, I'm going to tell you the truth today. You don't like it. That's your problem. I'm going to tell you to speak truth. Truth will set you free. Truth will set you free. Now, truth will set you free. One thing, one thing about this church, when I first came here, the pastor told me something. He blew me away. He said, before we got this building, before we got this, we did something. We went and we served people. Crazy testimony. We went, we did stuff for people. We, we, we went to people's homes. We not. I mean, they're talking about, they, were, they were like armed and dangerous on the offense before they was able to build the foundation of this church. You sit here, you sit here because you have people that believe in something that is seen impossible, but God is the God of the impossible. Today, you hear, you, today is, today we built the kingdom backwards. That's how we all jacked up. I got married on Halloween. I had a demonic wedding, ritual, animal, sacrifices. Sold my soul. When I sold my soul, when I, when I sold my soul. You see, one thing you have to understand, one thing Christians lack, one thing, I don't pray for stuff. I don't pray God give me, God bless me, God fill up my pockets with money. I don't, I don't pray for that. I don't need that right now. I don't need that to get to the finish line. I said, Lord, Father, Jesus, increase my faith, increase my discernment, because I need to see that devil that is around the corner before I hit the corner. Increase, increase my discernment, increase my faith. So when the devil shows up, I was the other day in California, I was preaching. There was a lady sitting over there, I said, that's a witch. And she came up for the meeting. She came up to the altar court. I said, I know who you are. She said, what do you mean? I said, you're a witch. She said, how do you know? I said, I can smell you from here. I can smell people from here that you're not even saved. You're playing, you're playing church. You know what, what about demon church? If you lay, you get punished. Some people walk into church like it's the mall. I come whenever I want. I sit wherever I sit. No reverence. No reverence. I have more reverence for the devil than you have for Jesus. I have, I have more loyalty to the devil than you have for Jesus. And demon church, if you didn't tie... Oh, if you didn't tell your 10% in demon church, you get beat down by the devil. You get a sickness, you get, you get, you get attacked, you get tormented. If you, didn't, if, you, if you didn't tie in demon church, if you didn't tie, if you, if you stole the devil's money, write out your will. That's why the guy in Batman, you know the guy in Batman, the guy did Batman, the Joker, the guy did Joker, he stole something from the devil and the devil took him out. The devil took him out. Because the devil, one thing he understands, the devil wants glory at any cost. There's a lot of young people here today, but you're not married to Jesus. You're married to social media. You spend more time with, you spend more time with Mark Zuckerberg than you spend with Jesus. And then you got the audacity to tell me that you're saved. You ain't saved. You got religion. You got religion. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you want to hang out with him. You want to spend time with him. I talk to Jesus down the street. I talk to him. Every I talk to him in my car. I, t- I, t- I talk more to Jesus than I talk to myself. I talk more to Jesus than I talk to myself. A lot of you talk to yourself a whole lot. Y'all be having some good conversations with yourselves. <laughs> and you'll be talking to each other back. Yeah, we call that bipolar. So how is, how is it that I spent $100,000 in witchcraft? The cycles and patterns of the enemy. I know how to flick people with it. That's why you're free for six months. And six months later, you're back in the same hogwash. That means... That means that what you got going, it was never cut at the root. You get, you get, you get, you get something that's called alleviate, and then the devil comes back for you because the door is still open. 
that they'll still have real estate rights over your life. He still own, he has the deeds over your life. And you think that you are saved. You see, we, we, have, we have confused the people in the church that we think that once you get saved, everything falls off. That is a lie. Something might fall off, but not everything. If you have a bunion in your toe, it's still going to be there. Even if you're saved. You know, you know what's crazy about witchcraft? You know what's crazy about witchcraft? My father never loved me. Never loved me. My father never put his arms around me and said to me, I love you. My father never took me to a baseball game. My father never bought me a bike. My father never put food on the table because he wanted to spend it on the woman's in the street. When my father died, he died at the age of 33. He got shot for a woman that wasn't even his when he had a good wife home. I sat, I stood in front of my father. I, when my father got shot, it was five, it was three minute walk from my house. And we, I stood in front on a rainy night. It was cold that night. I stood in front of the social club that he got shot for a woman that wasn't in his with my mom. I was 13 years old. And I used to pray and say, and I used to pray to the devil. And I said, the devil, if you kill my dad, I'll serve you. And the devil always looking to replace the old with the new. And my dad died for a woman that was in the head. Because you know what the greatest trick the devil plays on relationship? How many, how many people here marry? You know what the greatest trick the devil plays on relationship? You want me to tell you? That he'll take the hoochie that you're hanging out with. He'll make it look like 80% when you got 80% at home. It's like the dog that goes to the lake. They look at the bone in his mouth. But he thinks that the mouth on the water is bigger than what he got in his mouth. But you had the blessing, but you lost it because it was, a, del it was a, del a delusion or delivered spirit that you dropped the one in your mouth. And you went, you went for the one in the lake, but there was nothing there. Because I did that kind of witchcraft to break up marriages. But don't, let, let's not go like this all the time because women are crazy too. <laughs> not just the men. Well, yeah. Swing from both sides. It's called a Delilah spirit. It's a type of the church. The church, it's a type of the church. The church at large, it's like a Delilah spirit. It's sleeping, it's a Samson spirit. You see, Samson slept in the lap of Delilah. So how is it? How is it that Christians, how is it that Christians come to church they go through the motions of baptism, sit here, but you're still medicated. You're still tormented because you never dealt with the doors that you're supposed to close behind you. There was no renunciation. There was no breaking legal rights and contracts and covenant with the enemy. Understand? Oh, it's going to get nice tonight. We got a lot of people in here. Look at this, this place. is packed. Is this normal? I was telling my brother, it's normal. He said, no, this ain't normal. That means, you know why? That means God wants to set you free before the year's over. God wants to set you free before the year's over. So you can finish your year strong. Strong in Jesus. Strong for the next chapter of your life. Strong that God is writing your story. We just take the pen out of God's hand. We try to write our own stuff. See, the difference between me and different between God and us, God don't need white out. You get it later. When you, when you write your own story, it becomes a mess. You need a lot of white out. And when God writes your story, he don't need white out. He knows what he's writing. He knows what he's doing. So how is it that you go to church for two hours and you're going to deal with a devil like me when I was in the kingdom of darkness, B.C., before Christ? How is it that I'm spending, I'm spending seven hours in church, what you call Behelia? I was doing, that was normal for us. I remember when the first time I came to church, they were doing a behelia. And the guy at 12 o'clock, the guy said, let's bring out some pound cane coffee. I said, we, we, we need pound cane coffee. It's only 12 o'clock. Let's go to 5 in the morning. He said, no, no, I'm tired. I said, no, you're, you're not tired. You're spiritually tired. That's what, the, that's what the devil took and ramped up his church. And today his church is depleted and anemic. There's nothing there. Because when it was time to fight, you stood home. Cycles and patterns of repeat. Me, release. I used, I used to actually project over regions like this and curse the neighborhood. Because if I can curse the neighborhood, I can curse the people. Astral projecting. Astral, I actually project so much. I have more miles than any, than any airline. 
I was to force myself to sleep to astral project because I knew if I can curse the region, I could curse the people. That's why when you do spiritual warfare, don't, don't, don't. You, spiritual warfare is easy. Make an assessment of your neighborhood. What is there that it, it's tormenting your neighborhood? Is it alcohol spirit, homosexual spirit? What is it? Because whatever is it there that dominates your neighborhood, that is the demon that you have to fight. That's the demon that you have to dismantle. But the thing is, that we fight. This is how we fight. We fight from the, from the earth round. You lost the fight. When you fight from the earth, are you fighting from the flesh? See, you have to, you have to fight from the place of authority that God giving you the third heaven. It's the high, the highest of the heaven. That means every devil, every witch, every warlock, every curse, every, every root worker, every soothsayer, every wizard, every satanic demonic curse, every generation of curse is under your feet. When you fight from that place of authority, because you're fighting from a third heaven, you're fighting from the position with Jesus Christ. We sit in the highs of the highs of heaven with Jesus Christ. Learn how to practice and learn how to exercise your authority. Because when you fight, you, when you earn how to exercise your authority, you strip the devil from his abilities. What was the last time you moved from glory to glory? When was the last time you had a glory moment? I'm not talking about, you know, you bought an extra lollipop. Because <laughs> we confuse. We think moving to glory is material things. It's not material things. Spiritual things. Spiritual. Spiritual. God said, worship me in spirit and truth. It's spiritual things. Spiritual things. When was the last time you had an assessment of your, of, your, of your inventory of your warehouse? What is missing? What is lacking? What needs to be filled in your warehouse? What is it? Your warehouse is you. Are you the same Christian of last year? Are you the, in the book of numbers? You're growing old, but you ain't growing up. Geographically, you're in the same place, but you ain't moving. That's what happened to many Christians. We grow, that's why Christians leave church. That's why they become, because, because when you don't grow, and you don't, you don't grow from glory to glory, and you don't get the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you become stale, and you become angry, you become religious, and then you leave. The tricks and the wiles and the schemes of the enemy. The battlefield. You see, this is, the ba this is what happened to believers. They, they try to fight out there, and the fight is in here. But you see, you try to beat the devil out there, but you can't beat him in here. But if you can beat him here, you can beat him out there. When the devil attacks me, I ain't looking to fight him out there. I defeat him in here. What voice am I going to bow down to? What voice am I going to listen to? What voice is going to control my day? What voice is going to sp I'm going to allow to speak into my life? There's two. There's three voices in life. Three, yours, the Holy Spirit, and the devil. What voice are you going to bow down to? Your voice, your voice of reasoning, the voice of the Holy Spirit, or the voice of the enemy? Which one owns you? I can tell by your con spiritual condition which voice you listen to. That's why you got to break things, destroy things, dismantle things. You have to, I mean, you know, I, I, got, I got this crazy hat. It's called spiritual gangster at home. <laughs> Letting you know. Because that's the only thing that the devil understands. The devil don't understand, oh, I cast you out in Jesus' name. I was in a, I was in a meeting in Florida one time, and they had bishop, pope. I think the pope was there too. The lady got demon possessed. She was flying off the air. They were laying hands on her, and they were telling the demon, get out in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. You know what the devil said? They said, I don't care who you call. I'm killing her tonight. I'm going to destroy her life tonight. She's not going to live one more day. And she was floating in the air. This is real stuff, people. This is real stuff. Don't tell me that you are you entertaining, you entertain the ways of the enemy, you entertain the ways of the world, you entertain the words of the flesh, and you tell me you got the Holy Spirit. No, you don't. You divide it. And anything that is divided with inside you, the devil can conquer. So so the lady's floating, they're laying hands on her, they're laying hands on her, my brother laying hands on her, and the demon's laughing. I mean, this crazy life, crazy life. And, and, and we had have, we have bishop, we had the pope, the cardinal was there trying to cast out the devil. He was moving. And then I was back, I was, in, I was uh, all the way in the back pack, packing up my bag. But the conference was over. They said, well, why don't you go get John Ramirez? I guess that was, that was the last result because I didn't have a title. 
It's like the pressure. You know, when you're playing baseball, you're playing games. Well, I pick her. Well, I'm the only one left. I, you know, the only reason they're picking you, they don't want to let because you suck. <laughs> you've been in those moments. You're like the last one. And you're like, well, I take him. You're like, well, I'm the only one left. Or they pick you over a girl. That's a bad moment. I take Wanda over him. So they, they, they were doing this thing. So I went over. When I went over, this girl, you could see the white of her eyes. There was no eyes. There was nothing in her eyes. She was floating in the air. When I went down, I said, let her go, let her go. She was so strong that people couldn't hold down. I said, let her go, let her go. And then when I went to put my hands on her, her eyes rolled. And she said, you I know. You I know. Why? Because there's authority in you. That's why the sons of Sceva, come on, it's in the Bible. People, the sons of Sceva, casting out demons, playing game, casting out demons, a form of religion, a form of religion, a form of godliness, casting out demons. But the real demon showed up and said, Paul, I know Jesus, I know who are you. I don't see no rank, I don't see no authority, I see no, I don't see no armor in you, so I can just beat you down. No authority, no power, nothing but a big Bible and coming to church, but you're empty. And I will recruit you. I will go to clubs. I will go to clubs and look for Christians hanging out in clubs and recruit them to the dark side. Because I, I can show you that my daddy had more power than your daddy. And I know how to, I know how to illustrate that power because I know how to contaminate your mind because you were already open to the witchcraft that I was going to put on you. So I will go to clubs and look for Christians. And they will be in, they'll be in clubs hanging out. I'm ministering. No, you're not. I had a Christian one time, he said, I'm, I mean, this guy had a real argument. I ministry, I go to clubs, and I drink Polish spring water. I said, I said but you're still, you, you're still in, I told him, you're still in sin. You're still in the wrong place. You're in the devil's camp. I'm in sin. I'm not, I'm not dancing. I'm drinking, Poland, I'm drinking Polish spring water. I'm not dancing. I said, what about the hoochie with the little dress that walks by you and you lust over her? <laughs> well, I didn't know about that. I said, well, the devil knows. I said, by the way, are you into pornography? A little bit. You're drinking Polish Spring. How could you evangelize someone when you got Mark Anthony playing? <laughs> or J-Lo. And they're into witchcraft, by the way. And you listen to the satanic music. They don't have, and you listen to Celia Clou, Biba Chango. Chango is a principality that runs the mountains. And you dance into that stuff, and you can open yourself to be contaminated and be cursed. And then you bring that curse home to your family. And then you want to blame the pastor. And you want to blame the church. You want to blame the pastor and the church that you're not getting fed, you're not going nowhere. But your door's been open for a long time, Jack, because you've been playing game behind the scenes. It's okay. We're going to do the altar call. We'll prove it to you. It's, it, it's, listen, either you're in or you're out. Either you're in. When I was in the devil worshiping game, I was all in. I was sold out. I was so sold out when Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up in 1999 to come get, I didn't know how he knew my address. I was shocked. He showed up. He showed up. Jesus showed up. I was sitting in my bed. I was seeing a demon possessed in my bed. I was sitting in all crazy. Demon possessed. I mean, animal blood. I got the scars right here. I got the marks right here. Sold myself to the devil. I had the cross upside down. I mean, I was sold out. I sold my soul. I did everything. I had a $100,000 witchcraft in my house. Human bones. I had a cemetery in my house. I had, I had dirt from nine cemeteries. I had dirt from nine jails, different jails, different stages. So when I put that dirt on you, you go into jail. What I put my own brother in jail with the same dirt for five years. Cause he he got, he got me a little bit. He got me a little. He got just a little bit. He got me upset. So I did witchcraft to my own brother. People, you, the devil is after us in every single way. Whether it's politics, whether it's whether whether it's current events. Understand, you got to keep the doors closed. It's discernment, keep the doors closed. It's not about a politician situation. It's about a evil or good. Which one would you stand on? What side would you stand on? I have to stand on the side of good because God's going to say, where did you cast your lots? That means I, have to, I have to come in agreement with people. I have to come in agreement with the church of Jesus Christ. I did witchcraft to people, kill the baby in the womb. I did witchcraft to people, give people miscarriages because I knew that the baby was in the womb. So you have to get it before it was born. I did all kind of witchcraft. I did witchcraft to destroy marriage. I did witchcraft. To, I did witchcraft. 
if you had an ugly guy, he wanted a pretty girl, I used to do witchcraft to get the pretty girl. Because this frog was not going to get the princess. <laughs> the truth is the truth. You ever seen guys walking around with a real cute girl? You're like, how oh, he got her? <laughs> I didn't know a John Ramirez. <laughs> Paid good money to get her. But the evil thing, once the witchcraft is broken, you don't maintain it. If you don't maintain it, he ends up killing her because he gets a Jezebel spirit. If you don't maintain what you, when you don't maintain what the witchcraft didn't maintain, it, it would turn to a Jezebel spirit and he ends up killing her. It's kind of quiet now. So, 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 you see, the devil lets you play with him. But the thing you don't understand that the devil play for keeps. You see, it's, it's like you play with the devil, you play with social media, you play with things that you don't supposed to play with, you entertain things you don't supposed to entertain with, and the devil is willing you in. Because you know how you see the sin? Psalms, Psalms 91, the young lion. You see, the young lion, Psalms 91, is the lion, it's the sin, it's the full entrustment of the devil. Psalm, the follower in Psalm 91 is the devil. And then he'll give you four ingredients. And the one, the small line, the one you think you can play with, the one you think you can put away, the one you think that you, could, you, can, you can quit anytime you want, that little young line eventually will turn into a big line. And what you didn't kill end up killing you. It, it, it is, I, I knew how to play those things. I know how to put seducing spirits. I know how to put witchcraft on people. I know not only witchcraft, not only marrying Halloween, sold my daughter to the dark side. In Halloween, I got, I got married in Halloween. I told my I had the most diabolical, diabolical wedding. No people came. I didn't get no gifts. You know how you do a wedding? They give you that list and you go, you know, Costco's and you buy something. <laughs> I don't know. Christians are crazy. Everybody, when, when the COVID-19 hit, everybody ran to Costco's. Toilet paper. Last time I checked, you don't get diarrhea with COVID-19. <laughs> and people, people put more faith in hand sanitizer than Jesus. Oh. Weak Christianity. Weak Christianity. Every two minutes, you smell like, you smell like Clorox. It wasn't even anointing oil. Clorox. I just got to keep myself clean. Well, you're clean in the outside, but you're dirty in the inside. Where's your faith? Your faith is the currency of heaven, baby. You're bankrupt. You don't even know it. Every, every five minutes, you're washing your hands. You know how we wash our hands in the ghetto? That's how we did it. And if a candy falls on the floor, we pick it up, we do it. No one die. 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 You want to know what bum pee on the floor? We want what dog did his thing on the floor? We just picked up that candy. That was two cents. We wiped that off the shirt. Bless it, Lord. We wouldn't even save. Bless it. Put it right in the mouth. That's faith. That is faith. That's real faith. Because when you grow in the projects, they don't smell like perfume. That's real faith. And now we worry about everywhere, everywhere you go. This is what they're doing to you, my people. Listen to me. You adapt to the system. See, Jesus don't want you to adapt to the system. This is the devil's game. Let me give it to you. This is the devil's game. The devil plays, the devil in the beginning of everything, he plays chess. Strategies. How to move in the tables. How to move, the, how to move situations in the spirit around against you and me. He knows how to play strategies, chess game. Chess game is a, a, a mind game. And then after he got you positioned in the place he wants you, and then he turns it into checkers. Because you're already weak, you're already immune, and you're already, you're already, you dumb dumb yourself to the system. So the system is this. You wear the mask, you with me? You adapt to the mask, you with me? You let the mask control you, okay? And I'm not making, I'm not making fun of nobody. I'm giving you something from the Lord. You do that, understand, right? Jesus was born outside of the system. Jesus died outside of the system. You adapt to the system. 
It becomes the norm to you. So when the mark of the beast comes, you'll take it. Checkmate. Checkmate or checkers, crown me. Now I'm your God. That's how they do it. They play you down to weaken you, to control you. To manip it's a manipulation spirit. And people don't want to hear the truth. But the truth will set you free. I, 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 I'm not going to dumb down to the system because I know how the enemy works in patterns and cycle. You see this mad stuff? That'll be gone. I guarantee you by, by, by January, it'll be gone. And then they'll come out with something else. And they were saying the money's dirty. I said, well, give it to me. I'll, I'll, I'll sanctify it. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'll be speaking in tongues over it, and I'll be building churches with your money. I'll be building churches with your money. Why? Because they're dumbing you down because they're trying to get the money out the way for the one more order. Manipulation, controlling spirits to get you into the situation. So you can, you, can, you can adapt to the system. So when the Antichrist come, you'll bow your knee to the Antichrist. And the church is in the condition, ready to bow the knee to the golden image. Because I see the devil spend more time in the church than he spent more time in the world. So how is it, why would God save a person like me? I don't deserve it. I went to, I, you know, you know what I was telling pastor, I was telling, I went in October 1999, I left my body. God took me out of my body, sent me to hell. Hell is a real place, has an address. Hell, the address, you know what the address, the hell says? Hell says, hell, hell is the address of the absence of God. So, so, so here I am in October of 1999, preparing, because October month is witchcraft month. All the way to November 1st, El Dia de la Muerto, right? We used to practice that, boy, like it was religion. You still do. Some of you still practice that, that Santa Muerte and all that crazy stuff. Santa Muerte ain't going to get you to heaven. I know you don't like it, but that's too bad. And the behind Guadalupe ain't going to get you there either. You're going to light candles and marry all you want. Ain't going to work. Jesus said, we are, he is the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to him but him. And it's a, it's a very, you can't, you can't negotiate the Bible. You can't, you can't downplay it. The word is the word and the word is true and every man's a liar. It is true. You practice these things and you call them, you know what, the devil's into culture. The devil knows that the only way he can get you is through culture. So you practice things that your mama used to practice, that your auntie used to practice, your grandma used to practice. The devil knows culture. The devil understands me too. Listen, eight years old, into, into demon church, peritimo, santeria, palo mayumbe, all because it came from my family bloodline, with the curse from my family bloodline, all the way to the age of 35, okay? 25 years of my life. I blink and I lost 25 years of my life. So why would God save a wicked person like me that were doing witchcraft to people, putting witchcraft, torment? spirit, homosexual spirit, demonic spirits of every kind, drug addiction spirit, I will put demonic spirits on you. If I told you I was going to kill you in 30 days, you would prepare your funeral because you was going to die. Okay, I did witchcraft to the, to the highest level of witchcraft. I sat with the devil and talked more to the devil than you talked to Jesus. You talked to Jesus once a week. I would sit there and talk to the devil. I feel the presence of the enemy come into my room and we'll have conversation here talking to my mind. What was the last time you had a good conversation with Jesus? You don't even know his voice. You know Julio's voice. You know Julio's voice, but you don't know Jesus. Any Julio's in the house? Sorry. <laughs> my sheep know me by my voice. And if you don't know his voice, then you're not a sheep. You're a wannabe. You're a Christian Dior. I want to be because if you know his voice if you know his voice you know when to turn if you it's crazy because the product of son came to himself he heard something it wasn't his own reasoning he was jacked up it was he heard something the hog pen couldn't hold him down the pigs couldn't hold him down his condition his environment couldn't hold him down. he said he came to himself that means that he something happened to him that he turned meanwhile his brother was in church all day long every day seven days a week and he was hateful 
When was the last time you heard the voice of God? When was the last time God spoke to you? I spent more time with the devil's voice for 25 years than you spent with the voice of the Lord. How is it you know Susie called you? She disguised her voice. She tried to prank you. You know her voice, but you don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Most of you don't even know the love of the Father. That's why you're still fragmented. And that's why I needed a father. And the devil said, I'll be your daddy. And I rode with the devil for 25 years because my daddy didn't love me. My daddy didn't take care of me. My daddy never bought me clothes. That whole bully stuff, I got bullied when I was young. I was wearing other people's clothes. I, we was eating government cheese. We were eating other people's stuff. My mom had to send me. My mom had to send me to school early in the morning to get breakfast because there was no breakfast in my house because there was no love in the house. That's why people sign up for all kind of stuff. People do all kind of stuff because they're chasing love. You see, you see people 80 years old, he, he, he's, on, he's on Christian Mingo. 80 years old, he's on Christian Mingo. Because he's looking for love. Someone wants to love him. And if you don't let Jesus love you, the devil's going to love you. And I got news for you. The devil can't love you because you made in the image of God. That's right. You made in the image of God. So the devil can not love you. So don't drink the Kool-Aid. You know, hell is, is amazing. I mean, demonic wedding, witchcraft to the court, practice witchcraft. They witchcraft on Christians because Christians have so many open doors. Witchcraft on Christians fragment you, own you, enslave you to witchcraft. Because the only Christian that knew how to fight, there was twice in my whole 25 years when I used to actually project, I had two encounters with Christians in the spirit realm and they destroyed my plan. I couldn't get into the neighborhood because they knew how to pray. After, after 25, the last meeting I had, it was 17 warlocks that went to this meeting. And the last meeting I had was 17 warlocks. And we went to the meeting because we had to know how to shift things in the spare round in December when you was in, you were in the mall buying junk. Right? You buying junk. Well, I said, oh, he's a large? Well, he's an extra large. <laughs> and the... And I was preparing for witchcraft. So when you decide to do your little fasting, your little Daniel fast, I already had a month on you. That's why in December, I'm going to take five days of fasting. I'm going to kill that witch. I'm going to give her a perm. <laughs> five days of fasting. I'm bringing it to them on, on December. I ain't shopping for nobody. I'm going to bring it because then when I do the Daniel fast, that's just a bonus. It's like when you fast, I'm not fast, when you do communion, I do communion in my house all the time. I don't have to wait for the pastor to bring out the cups, man. I got my own cups. I do communion in my house, man. I do my own party. I do my own communion in my house. I do everything. When I come to church, it's just a bonus because it's a lifestyle. When was the last time you go to communion? You got cupcakes in your house. You got cupcakes, but you got no communion cups in your house. And I can tell how you got cupcakes. Just saying. Take it out with the Holy Spirit. I'll leave you with this. Demonically, insanity, did all the witchcraft ceremonies you could never do. Did them all. I spent 100 grand. There was no more ceremonies to do. I did them all. Marine spirits, witchcraft spirits from the mountains, second heaven, first heaven, territory demons, cemetery demons. I did it all. River demons. I can name them all. I did all the I did the ice bucket challenge before you did it, because that's witchcraft, by the way. So when you challenge Julia for the ice bucket challenge, he was initiating shift into witchcraft. It's called Sansi. See, the the world, the church copies the world, but the world doesn't copy the church. That's how I know you're in bed with the devil. But what would I do the ice bucket challenge? First of all, I don't like cold water anyway. My water has to be nice and warm before I jump in. So I'm going to do the ice bucket challenge because some guy came up with it. I don't even know to do. Matter of fact, I heard he committed suicide. So why would you do something from the world that's not edifying to the body of Christ? Why? Oh, you, that means Tommy, you're a weak Christian. You're a weak Christianity. 
We Christianity. So how is it that I, in, in 1999, 1999, I turned around, I sat in my bed, I said, Jesus, I am not going to serve you. I want nothing to do with you. Your church is weak. I was telling him the truth. Your church is weak. There's nothing your church can do. I came across every Christian, every Christian that called themselves a Christian. I had spiritual warfare fight with them, and I had, I, I, they had nothing to fight back with. I'd rather go to hell before I turn my life to you. And, and you know what's you know what's crazy about you know what's crazy? Two weeks before Jesus showed up in my bedroom, I was gonna I was gonna sacrifice my first human being. I was gonna cut him into pieces and drain and, and drain his blood and put it in my pot. I went I came from a club left left my left the club at four in the morning. Got to my about four something. Parked my car. The devil was sitting there. The devil said, "There's someone on the twelfth floor. He, he's gonna he's gonna try to mug you. Sacrifice him." I said, "Okay, well done. I do it." When I went up to the twelfth floor, I looked behind the door. He was standing right there. Taller than me, stronger than me. I, gra- I went to grab him. I was half demon possessed. I went to grab him. This dude, this dude ran down the stair like it was a marathon. He escaped from my hand. I was going to bring him to my apartment. I was going to bring him into my cardon, el caldero. I was going to have nine knives. I was going to stab him in the juggler vein, drain his blood, cut his arms off, cut his legs off, and put it in my pot and make the demons walk the earth like a human being. So all this witchcraft in Hollywood, I, I, was, I knew more than that. All the witchcraft that you see on TV, I know more than that. All the witchcraft, I, 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 I broken witchcraft from people. I have, God has used me to break witchcraft from people. I say, I, I did more than that. Because I got the devil's playbook. Because the devil has nothing new. Cy- cy- cycles and patterns of repeat. He just knows how to dress it different. That's why you see people get married, right? They marry one joker. They get divorced. They marry the same guy in, the, in a different suit. Same guy in a different suit. He's got blonde hair, blue eyes, but he's the same devil. Left my body, went to hell. Hell, hell is a real place. I mean, here I am. I told God, I don't want to serve you. And then all I said to him when I was leaving, when I was falling asleep, anesthesia sleep, by the way. It wasn't a real sleep. It was an anesthesia. I was falling to the sleep. And now all I heard, all I said, it came out of my mouth. All I said, if you're bigger than my daddy, you show me, leave me alone. God took me out of my body, took me to hell. And hell's a place that I got in this train that was going hellbound, and you couldn't see the faces of the people because the people was terrified. There was ter- terror was in that train. And then you had Jezebel in the train speaking in demonic tongue. He, she was in demonic tongue. She was calling me traitor, traitor, traitor. And I and I was in this train, and this thing hit when it hit the gates of hell, and it went into hell. That thing made an explosion like it never before. When it got down there, I stepped I stepped out of it. I said, I don't belong here. When I stepped out of it, you hear the ground breathe like a person because hell, the ground in hell is alive. You go. Whoa. And then fear will grip you. Fear will, will, fear will paralyze you. Not the fear here. It's like fear, like a human, you ever see a human person grabs you like that? That's the way the fear grabs you. It grabs you like that. And you, you can't rip it off you, and it can't let you go. It's a tormenting fear. And all, you hear the wailing and the sounds of the background that people are being tormented. A forever place. A place that if you were to put this mic in, in hell, they would like to hear the word repent one more time. You tell people about repent. Why are you judging me? Fool, because I don't want you to go to hell. And then when I walk the grounds in hell, you can hear. It's a real place. And then when, I, when, when, when the devil came out in hell, he went to, he, he said, I loved you. I was with you to eight years old. Your father loved you. I loved you. Why are you going to leave me? You know my secret. I give you, I, I knew so much secret of the kingdom of darkness that even the witches and warlock that were there for 50 years, they were 50. The devil said, I can kill you. I can kill you. I can kill you. I can kill you. In a meeting one time, he said, but I can't kill John because John I love. Because I was sold out to the point that I did, I, I slept in cemetery. I did everything that, I did every assignment the devil gave me. I didn't miss a beat. And the only reason that I left the devil because I had a head-on collision course with the cross of Jesus Christ. With the cross, I, I, when I got to hell, when the devil went to grab me in hell, when he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ showed up. The, what, this wooden cross. I said, where does this come from? Because I didn't have, a, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have pockets. I mean, I had a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. And being tormented to the point never, I, I, that torment, it's not even human. The gasping for air is not even human. The, 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 the wailing and, and, the thing, and, and the desperado comes over you, it's not even human. Can't even, it's not even on the earth realm. What comes over you in hell. And then the devil came, the cross came, and he went to grab me, and the cross hit him. 
Because he made contact to cross, he fell. I ran deeper into the tunnels of hell. And the tunnels of hell are very, very narrow. The different compartments in hell. And the one that I was in, it was very narrow. And when I went deeper into hell, the devil came out. He said, I have to destroy you because you know too much about the occult. When he went to grab me again, the cross came out. And when the cross came out, he went to make contact to grab me. And I said, I got these marks here. I'll destroy you with these. He said, that's my contract that I own legal rights over your life. And when he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ came out. God said, if you make your bed in hell, I'm there. And that night, the, door, the Lord was there. And when the cross came out, the devil couldn't deal with the cross. And when I came back into my body, I felt like I was in ICU. They were doing these electrical paddles, electrical shocks in my body. When I came back into my body, and I bent my knee, and I left a daddy that I could see. For one, that I never seen in my life. And I went and I turned to Jesus Christ. And all the damn time, and God decided to write my story. Been in Japan, preached my heart out, a little bronze kid in Japan. It's like saying that East LA kid in Japan, preached my heart in Japan, preached my heart in Germany. I preached from across the street from Buckingham Palace because it's not where you start, it's where you want to finish. <laughs> Pitch the street, I was preaching, and big band, the clock was right there. Preaching in the streets, preaching in the, in, in, in the UK, in the United Kingdom, preaching in Japan, preaching in Germany. I preach in all the Caribbean islands and, and, and out there. I preach in all the places that God has sent me to play. My dad, the father my dad took me was the car wash. And my daddy in heaven is taking me everywhere. And when, I, and when he finished writing my story, when he, and we end with this, when he finished writing my story, you're going to miss me. You'll be talking about me when I'm gone. Because I'm going to leave a legacy for Jesus Christ that he didn't make a mistake of picking me. So my question is simple for you. How do you want to finish your story? Two things going to happen when I die. I promise you this. Hell will rejoice because I left the battlefield because they think I'm crazy. And I will make Jesus Christ proud that he made a mistake, that he picked me. I was telling pastor, last year, March 11th, I died in my apartment. And I do my altar call after this. I died in my apartment last year, March 11th, I died. I left my body. No astral projecting. When you astral project, you feel filthy. When you leave your body and you die, you have a peace. And when I left my body, I was leaving. I saw my body there, laying there. And I was leaving through my windows. And you feel like this gravity thing pulling you. You have no control of your spirit. And it was pulling me. And it was pulling me. And I looked back and I saw my body laying there. I was dead, completely dead. And I was leaving. And I was, I was leaving. As I was leaving, not, I, 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 didn't, I have a daughter. And my daughter's 31. I could have said, well, my God, what my daughter's going to think? What my mom is going to think? I wasn't thinking about it. I had such a peace. I had such a tranquility that came over me. All I said was, it, it wasn't even my words. I think God, I, I promise you, God put those words in my mouth. All I said was, Lord, I'm so disappointed that I'm leaving early. If you would have leave me here a little longer, I would have done so much more for you. And God put me back in my body. So that means hell couldn't stop me because Jesus Christ showed up. And in heaven... It's not my time yet. So I'm going to do like Paul. If I go to heaven, I, I say win-win because I'll be hanging out with Jesus, man. We'll be having an In-N-Out burger. <laughs> and if I'm here, I'm exposed to works of darkness and set the captives free for Jesus Christ. So my altar call is simple for you. My altar call is simple for you. Don't be like the Christian that starts everything and finishes nothing. You know how, you know, my education is an A in gym and an A in lunch. I got a high school diploma. You can, you can use it as bounty paper. But my daughter finished college because I prayed her through. I broke the curse. <laughs> With me? And this is what I'm trying to get you. Don't be the Christian that you start everything and finish nothing. There's many Christians out there that start everything and finish nothing. Think about it. High school diploma, which is nothing. I had the highest grade was gym, A, and lunch, A. 
the rest looked like the United Nations, all kind of flag, F. <laughs> so that. But when I decided to give my life to Jesus Christ, and, I, and he took the pen and started to write my story, I'm an author of six books. Bestsellers. My book, I'm in Dangerous, already sold over 90,000 copies. My book, Destroying Fear, it just came out less, about a year ago. I already sold 28,000 copies. I'm writing another book. It's called, it's, it's called Conquer Your Deliverance for Next Year. I'm doing stuff that it, in my mind, it doesn't fit. But it fits in the mind of Christ. I'm doing stuff. I'm, I did an e-course. There's people that took my e-course. They've been blown away. I got, I got unbelievers, atheists, signing up for my e-course. Because God is writing my story. I got plan A. I don't have to chase anything because I already got the answer. It's him doing it to me. It's him doing it to me. It's him doing it to me. I've been in every Christian channel you can imagine. Every Christian channel. The only channel I haven't hit yet is Sesame Street. I'm working my way there. But I'm praying a big bird die so they can put me on. I, everything. It's, 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 it, it is, it's not where you start. It's where you want to finish. It's what you want to finish. I'm telling you, if you're here today, God didn't make a mistake. How many people you could be honest? Let's be honest. Let's be truthful. Be truthful with yourself. I died last year, March 11, 1999, I went to hell. I seen too much in Jesus, a doubt. Too much. I seen too I, I had people that did witchcraft on me that if, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I'd be dead. That's the kind of witchcraft they did to me. They did witchcraft to me. They tormented me for 30 days. I had to sleep during the day because there was a night the demons would come. I, I, I went, I went, I've been to hell and back. But Jesus never left my side. 